Now it's my pleasure to introduce our next speaker, Polly Trottenberg. Polly Trottenberg is the Dude Where's My Car Commissioner of the New York City Department of Transportation. And if you don't know what that means, you can just Google it. Uh, but it is hard to have a sense of humor um, when you're dealing with the New York media. And um, I think Polly does that with elegant and grace every day. It's no secret that we are close and we've been in such close contact over the last three years that I'm like her Corsican sister. I can actually feel the pains inflicted on her as she continues the struggle to make New York City streets safer and stronger. Polly has accelerated New York City's streets program, bringing select bus service to more communities, more protected bike paths, doubling the size of the bike share network. Not easy stuff. And Polly has done it with confidence, with creativity, with grace, supported by an incredible team at the New York City Department of Transportation. And yes, with two dogs at her side. Polly. <laughs> So they often say that you make the biggest mistakes in front of the friendliest audiences. So I was at the Brooklyn Chamber of Commerce and it had happened that morning that my car had been towed away and I just made a little joke about it. It became national news, so thanks for bringing that up, Jeanette. <laughs> so it's great to surf in your wake. So it is very, it's actually very fun to follow the, uh, the Western cities because I want to talk about what's happening in New York right now and I think we are experiencing uh, very much what's happening in the West, which is just this tremendous growth. And it's great to be here in Seattle, and I spent some time with Scott and looked at his 10-year his strategic plan. We've just put one together for New York City DOT as well to figure out how we can continue to achieve all the things we're talking about, the revolution, sustainability, equity, you know, reclaiming our streets while accommodating tremendous growth. And it's an exciting time in New York. We are right around the corner from our 400th anniversary, 2025. So our mayor is having us sort of ask that question as what, what does the city look like in its fifth century? Let's see if this works. There we go. All right, just to talk a little bit about some of the trends in New York. Look, you're, you're experiencing huge growth in the western cities, but when you look at the New York City numbers, they are incredibly eye-popping. We have the largest population in the city now in its history, over 8.5 million people, incredible employment. We have added, actually, this is a, something we're very proud of, we've added half a million jobs in the last five years, more jobs than in the entire state of Montana which I flew over a couple days ago. Um, incredible boom in tourists. And the interesting thing is we have been able, we've been very fortunate to essentially accommodate those trips almost entirely through sustainable modes. Look, it's been the work of my predecessors like Jeanette, and we've been very fortunate. Our transit system, we were able from the period of 1990 to now to absorb an extra 750 trips per year basically doing almost nothing to build out our subway system in that timetable. So we've been very fortunate. We actually had a lot of excess capacity in New York City that now basically we are bursting at the seams. And there you can see pictures of us bursting, bursting everywhere. Um, <laughs> just to talk a little bit about New York City DOT. Look, you all run big transportation agencies, and it's funny, we have sort of this tremendous set of assets at our disposal. Uh, you know, a massive street network, we run a 24-7 ferry, an incredible signal system, we now have an enormous, well over a thousand mile bike system. But it's interesting, when I listen to the western cities, I'm very jealous, because there are a couple of the levers that New York City does not control. We do not run our transit and bus system, and we don't have what you have out here in a lot of western cities. We don't have the ability without state authorization to levy a gas tax, to levy a sales tax, to do any kind of pricing or tolling. And so we have to sort of challenge, we have to deal with the challenge of this growth with, you know, a, a robust palette of things, but not some of the things you would have out here in the West. So this is our strategic plan. Um, you know, the challenge is how are we going to make our city safer and greener while accommodating what for us is this tremendously exciting growth. And I want to point out Michael Replogle, who is really the mastermind of this plan, which we did in record time. So whenever we obviously talk about what's happening in urban transportation, I know we all like to start with Vision Zero, and I want to thank Leah today. She led a great discussion of a lot of the cities, um, and uh, you know I think really there's a lot of fresh thinking out there, and 
you know, you can see some of the things we've done in New York City. It's funny, we had a debate today about whether the threes are, whether that's the term we should still use. But I think a lot of us know in New York, you know, started under Jeanette, a lot of incredible engineering projects. We have created a partnership, you can see here, between all our city agencies. I think we've done a lot of innovative things. We were able up in our state capital get a 25 mile an hour speed limit citywide to get the ability to deploy speed cameras. And we saw last year in New York City the lowest number of traffic fatalities in the city's history. But going forward this year, one thing we know about Vision Zero, you have to constantly be pushing ahead. And so particularly one area we're really branching out into is education. We're trying now to get our message out in a bunch of different languages. We've started a citywide curriculum now for fourth, fifth, and sixth graders, teaching them how to walk safely on the streets, using rap music, and filming little New York City children. Um, and we're also now looking at continuing to up our game on our street designs. And I know some of you will probably go hear Ryan Russo, who's going to talk about the work we're doing on left turns and looking at ways we can mitigate crashes there. Public space, one of our favorite topics. And I know Portland thinks that it's very weird, but New York City's kind of weird too, as you can see. Um, and Jeanette was, you know, she loves to talk about Times Square, and it's funny, I, I had the good fortune of getting to inherit Times Square, and one of the challenges we had this past summer was the, we had an explosion of cartoon characters harassing our tourists, and naked women painted with American flags, uh, and it became a big outrage in New York, and I'm happy to say we worked together, I think, to come up with a good system to make sure that everyone could coexist, that pedestrians continue to use the space, that people who wanted to get their pictures taken with the naked women could do so, but not bother everybody. And we've, we've tried to continue to experiment with public space. We tried this summer a shared streets program, which you've seen in Europe and in Bogota, where we closed off, you can see in this picture, a big part of lower Manhattan, and we tried to encourage all kinds of programming, art and dance and music, and get cars to drive five miles an hour. Uh, unfortunately, the day we did it, it was about 140 degrees out, and although we had worked closely with the police, some of them wouldn't let the cars in at all, and some of them let them go 30 miles an hour. So it's a work in progress, but we're definitely gonna come back to it. It was a lot of fun. We think for us, it's the next step in helping to do more temporary street not total closures, again, shared streets, to help, again, get the public used to, this street can be much slower and still function. You don't have to give up deliveries or all vehicle traffic. We're continuing to build out our bike network. That's pretty well known. We had a bold idea this summer, which is, can we expand the space on the Brooklyn Bridge pedestrian and cycling walkway? For those of you who know that space, it has now become remarkably crowded. We have, on a busy summer day, 10,000 pedestrians, 2,500 cyclists, and in places the walkway is only 10 feet wide. So we announced this summer, we said, well, we'll do a little study on this. It was Ryan Russo's brilliant idea. The minute we did it, it became national news. So we are now committed to figuring it out. So come back in a few years, and you'll be able to walk and bike much more easily on the Brooklyn Bridge. Our bike share system, I am proud of it. It is, uh, it is the largest in the country, and as Jeanette said, we have been, over the course of the last year, doubling the size of it. And you can see our map here, tremendous build out. Um, Bike share has finally come to the neighborhood in which the famous Prospect Park West bike lane was built. And uh, I'm happy to say it's being embraced pretty well by the neighbors, although one community board came to such screaming and shouting about it that they've now requested for the police to come to the next meeting, just to keep, just to keep order. So continues in, Brooklyn, in uh, uh, Prospect Park to be a lively debate about cycling. Select bus service, look for us, you know, again, as we see this tremendous growth in New York City, we're constantly challenging ourselves to figure out how we can make sure that it's benefiting all parts of the city, that all communities can benefit in this incredible job creation and all the opportunities that New York has. And although we have a remarkable subway system, there are big swaths of the city that it doesn't reach. And select bus service for us is a way to try and bridge that gap and connect those neighborhoods. We've been working closely with our partners in the MTA. We're just about to roll out our 11th route, which will be the Q70 to LaGuardia Airport. European cities have beautiful one-seat rides uh, to their airports. We will have a branded bus. Uh, you know, it's a start. And we're also, it's funny, some of the bus advocates are in the room here today. Even as we're continuing to build out our select bus services, we're also, I think, doing what a lot of cities are doing, which is asking the question, how can we roll these benefits out citywide? How can we speed up the acceleration of transit signal prioritization, 
build more dedicated bus lanes, get better camera enforcement, have off-board fare collection, all-door boarding. These are things in New York that we do in select bus service, but we don't do them citywide. And that requires a real partnership between New York City DOT and our transit agency, MTA. And I think I know there's going to be a discussion here where you can talk about transits and transit agencies and cities working together. But we're also, like a lot of cities, since our subway system really isn't growing very quickly, looking to get into the streetcar business. And I'm happy to talk to so many of you here that are doing streetcars. Our mayor announced a big and very ambitious one at the beginning of the year, the Brooklyn Queens Connector. In New York, like a lot of cities that have subway systems, our subway system feeds into Manhattan, but it actually connects our outer boroughs very poorly. And in New York City, that's where all the growth is happening now in Brooklyn, Queens, happening much faster than Manhattan. So we're looking to do a big, ambitious streetcar project. Uh, we've started this summer with looking at the engineering, the utilities, starting to do some of the, the, uh, the, the outreach, the governance, the financing questions, and we're very, very excited about it. We also, like this city, are actually a pretty big ferry city. We, uh, New York City DOT runs the second largest ferry system in the country, and we are now building out a privately operated ferry system, which is eventually going to hit all five boroughs. Um, and we too are into the, uh, we're into the smart city. New York City was not allowed to compete in the smart city round that Columbus just won, but we were actually also able to get a federal grant for $20 million to start to do connected vehicles work and looking at all the new technologies that are out there. For New York City, it's interesting. We have a lot of very, very cutting edge work that we're doing, connected vehicles, et cetera. But we're also in a lot of ways a big lumbering agency. We still have legacy computer systems that are 30 years old. So it's, very, it's a very fascinating spectrum from the most cutting edge technology to still bringing up some of our more rudimentary systems. And like a lot of you, we too do a lot of public engagement. Um, Particularly in New York City, we've really tried now in another way, just as someone was talking about, I think in Portland, how you're seeing so many new immigrant communities come in. In New York now, practically half our population is foreign born. And having the ability to reach people, for us, in 10, 11, 12 languages, to go to people in their neighborhoods, to give them culturally appropriate information. We've been doing a lot of work on that with street safety teams, and we've created a street ambassador teams. We sent them to Times Square this summer, actually, to explain to all the characters how the new rules would work. I, I too, admittedly, just, just like Leah, I like to jump in sometimes. There I am actually in Sunset Park trying to sell the population on the wonders of the streetcar. I, I didn't succeed, unfortunately. Um, but clearly for us, public engagement is how we get all this work done. And I think, you know, hearing Leah talk about the fun, you know, adventure she has being a commissioner, I think for me, it's the same thing. The chance to get out and talk to the people in your city and figure out how to make their lives better is really the most rewarding part of this job. So thank you.